Well, hello, hello, hello. I'm back. I'm back. I'm back. I'm back. I had to come back. I wanted to come back. I wanted to come back because I had a, there's another word that, that God has put into my spirit and dropped in my spirit that I want to help you with. And, um, what it is, uh, the title of this message is, um, the, the enemy has a system. Your enemy, the enemy, the adversary, the devil, Lucifer, Apollyon, uh, the adversary, he has a system. There's a way that he, he, he comes at us. There's a way that he's, he's working on you. There's a system to it. And, and, and see the thing about it, it's thought out. See, the plan that the enemy has against his, his, his people, God's people, uh, those that name the name of Christ because you're a threat, there's a system to it. He don't just, it's just, it's not obvious. It's unobvious. And one of the systems that he uses, he uses the system against ourselves. He uses our five senses. He uses, um, he uses our emotions. That's what it comes down to. He uses our emotions. We're going to talk about it. We're going to talk about it. The enemy has a system and, and the scripture said that we're not ignorant concerning Satan's devices, right? So we're going to identify the behavior. We're going to identify how he operates. We're going to identify how he gets inside of the head of the believer. That's what we're going to do. That's what we're going to do. We're going to do that after. Um, I'm going to say a quick word of prayer. And then I'm going to give you a couple of scriptures. We're going to talk. We're going to talk right quick. Uh, a couple minutes, three, four minutes. I'll be out of your way. A few, three, four minutes because actually me and the wife, Mrs. Gary, I go somewhere else. So and, um, uh, she gave me the space and time to be able to uh, come to you. And so we're going to come to you and give you something that God has put in my heart that's going to bless you. And uh, put it this way, the enemy has a system and his purpose in the system is to bind. This is the subtopic, to bind the strong man. To bind the strong man. Let's pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, God, we thank you. God, we bless you. God, we magnify you. God, for this is the day that you made, and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. God, your mercies are new every morning. God, God, allow us to see. God, allow us to see the warfare. God, allow us to see it. God, allow us to see what's going on, where the battle is at, where the fight is at. God, give us the wisdom. Open our eyes up that we can see and that we can receive and find life. You said he that has in your little here, and, and, and in the hearing, there is life because the moment that they receive life, that they receive truth, what's going to happen inside of them, there's going to come a leap, a leap, life. You're going to bring life. You're going to rejuvenate. God, you're going to revive. You'll bring out. God, you're going to bring through whatever situation that God, God that those that listen to me in, no matter what kind of hell, whatever kind of hellish situation, situations are talking to them. God, you're bringing them out right now. God, you're bringing out the drunkard. You, 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 you're taking the taste away from him. They don't want it no more. Uh, the backslider. God, you're speaking to the heart of the backslider. And they're turning. They're thinking. They're thinking again concerning home. They're thinking again concerning life. God, you're turning. God, you're turning the broken heart. God, you're mending that broken God, you're mending. God, you're taking uh, the bitterness out of, out of hurt. Those who have been hurt, you're putting sweetness there. God, you're sowing stuff up. God, you're changing the wind. God, you're changing the atmosphere of uh, so many conditions where it has been contentious, full of full of pain, full of hurt, uh, full of rejection, uh, full of uh, not not trusting, not believing, all of that. God, but you're, you're, you're cleaning up the air. God, you're cleaning up the air with your glory. God, you're cleaning up your air. God, with your anointing. God, for such a time as this, God. God, shake your people. God, shake them into life. God shake them into life, God. God give them a God give them a an epiphany. God give them a a day bar. God give them a a Damascus road experience. God where God you knock them off of the pathway. God if they're going wrong, God bring them back to life. God bring them back to understanding and focus like Jonah. When Jonah wanted to go go one way, God but you created a fish. God you created a storm. God that you might arrest them. God for those that are running and doing what's wrong. God created a storm. And arrest them, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. Got your way. Now, now, the enemy has a system. The enemy has a system. The enemy has a system and uh bind the strong man. Now, the one of the things that most, most, most uh troubles uh that we go through, they're self-inflicted. Most troubles 
are self-inflicted scriptures. Uh, St. Matthew 10.36 says, a man's foe is of his own household. Did you hear that? A man's foe is of his own household. That's why the enemy that. Your enemy is the enemy. There's someone who wrote a book. I think it was E. Allen. He said it was self-invited troubles. Most troubles are invited because of our imagination because we think certain things that we don't have proof of. And so we create this certain world. We create this certain lifestyle. And when it, when it doesn't, when reality that hits and it doesn't pan out to our, our the world that we created. And so then we disappoint. We upset and we mad. Oftentimes we're mad at things and situations and people that does not have no idea what's going on. Oftentimes we're mad at ourselves, And it's a trick of the enemy. It's a trick. It's a trick of the enemy. And, and that, that, that fight the enemy is between our ears, our mind. That's the fight. My brother, my sister, my sister, the fight is in your mind. Paul said that he said he find in his members a new law, something that's fighting them. And it's warring against his mind. That that he would, would want to do, he finds himself not doing. And, and what he defines himself that he shouldn't do, he finds himself doing. So who shall deliver me? He, he, he said he'll serve God in the spirit. Because when, when, you, when, when you operate in the flesh, you're bound by the laws of flesh. When you gravitate, when you live in it, uh, when you play with it, when you talk to it, you become bound. The scripture said the wages of sin is death. The way of a transgression is hard. See, but the gift of God is eternal life. Life. And what is what is what is what is what is the gift of God? What is what is uh the spirit? What is faith? Faith is saying, God, I trust you. And that's not living by what you feel. But you're going by what God spoke to your spirit, spoke to your heart, down in the city of your soul. And you're not governed by what you see. But you're governed by, by the voice that's speaking to you, saying, God says it's going to be okay. God said you're going through troubles. But in that trouble, he's going to be in the, in the trouble. And he's going to cause you to become free from the trouble. He's going to cause the trouble to define you, refine you, make you stronger, make you able to overcome. And see, because the thing about it, every trouble has an expiration date. No matter what kind of trouble you might be in, trouble talking to you, trouble you're dealing with, you need to know and you need to realize that troubles has an expiration date. And all you got to do is outlast it. The scripture says after you suffer a while. And so in suffering, there's a timetable. There's a time. But then after the timetable is over, he's going to make you perfect. There's a shaping in, there's a shaping in time. There's a shaping in pressure. There's a shape, shaping in trouble. You are being shaped to the image of how God re want to reflect you. And so to be perfected means to be, to be developed. To be shaped, to be formed. And so this is what God is that God is after a certain shape. That's why you go through what you go through, there's a certain shape, there's a certain look that He wants you to have that reflects Him, that testifies of His power, that reveals His glory through your life. The scripture says they overcame by the blood of the Lamb and by the words of your testimony. And so it's in your testimony where your victory is at. That's where it's at. And see, let me get back to the enemy has a system. And I'm, all, I'm about done. Give me about two more minutes. The enemy has a system. And the scripture says in uh, Mark 3.27, it says that no man, no man can, no man can enter into a strong man's house and spoil his goods, except he first bind the strong man. And, and then bind the strong man, then he spoils his house. And see, the enemy can't get into your house, the house of your understanding. The house of your faith, your house of your joy, the house of your understanding, unless he's able to get in through you. And it said that to bind the strong man means to, to tie your mind up, to do something that that this raw order, to do something that get into the window of some kind of way. And it comes from our flesh, our emotions, things we hear, things that we think, the, the things that we create. What we create is the, is the avenue that the enemy comes in through our imagination. When what we imagination, in our imagination, doesn't, doesn't, uh, doesn't, uh, uh, doesn't uh, uh, reflect or doesn't confirm or doesn't affirm the word. When, when what we feel doesn't testify of what God is saying because the, the scripture said, the blessed Lord maketh you rich 
and had no sorrow. So in God's blessing, there's an emotion that comes with it when, when God blesses you. And so, but not to get caught up in the blessing, not to get caught up in the emotion, but, get, but focus on the word. Focus on not the bless or, or the gift, but focus on the one that gave the gift. Because just like he gave it, he can take it away. And so God wants to focus on him and not the gift, not the gift. And, and see, and when you focus on him and not the gift, then you will not, your mind will be tied up. Don't seek after the gift, but seek after the gift. See, see, a lot of times we get, see, man becomes God, man becomes his own God when God is not in the equation. When man don't put God first, man becomes his own God. And see, what happened then, man worship other things. And see, many of you are worshiping certain things. And so that's where the problem is at. You're worshiping your mind. You're worshiping your moods. You're worshiping how you feel. <clears throat> you're worshiping how it used to be. You're worshiping without seeking God. You're worshiping. You, you're, you're seeking your own mind. The scripture said, rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft, but stubbornness is as idolatry. Idolatry is to worship something, to idolize something. And so oftentimes we become so hurt that we don't trust nobody but ourselves. We don't trust nobody but our own understanding. We don't trust nothing but our own emotions, our feelings, and our moods. When our emotions, our feelings, and our mood is in conflict with God's word. Because the scripture says, as a believer, when you accept Jesus as Lord, you're going to live by faith. Faith is not a feeling. And faith doesn't feel good. Faith is uncomfortable. Faith is believing when it don't look like it's real. Believing when it don't make sense to believe. That's faith. Being steadfast when things are messed up in your life. When things are all haywire in your life. But yet and still you trust God that he's going to fix it. That he's going to bring it back together. That's faith. Faith is going upstream when everything is going downstream. That's being independent. And so when you get to a place where it feels like everything is against you. And every situation is against you but you still trust in God. That's faith. And then your faith is being tried. And when your faith is being tried, that's when your faith grows. But when you lay your faith down and say you just doubt. And you only believe God, you only believe God when he do something, but you don't believe God when it ain't happen. And when it feels like, you know, you, you get the goosebumps, you don't get a feeling with it. And so now you think God done left you, but your, your relationship may be based on your knowledge of him. And that's having a relationship with him. I'm done. Those are my words. I got to go. Got to go. God bless you, God. But see, the enemy has a system and the system is to bind you first. Then once he can bind you, then he can spoil your house. And, and see, all the time you leave the door unlocked. When you're not paying attention, when you're rushing, when you're, when you're anxiety, when you're angry. See, he's trying to find you to make a spot, or make, make, a, or make a mistake. That's all he looks. He looks for that mistake. That's all. And so once he gets that mistake, he see that mistake, then that's, he, that's how he can get in. Case of one scripture, Matthew 13 chapter, where it says that a good man planted seeds in his field. But then the scripture said, why men slept, his enemies came in and sold tear. So which means that somebody was always watching them and waiting on them to go to sleep. And so you need to know that your enemies are waiting on you to go to sleep. That's all. Waiting on you to, waiting on you to mess up. Waiting on you not paying attention. Oh, that's all. He's just waiting on it. He's waiting on his moment. Waiting on his avenue. Waiting on his situation. But let him wait. Let him wait. Let him wait. Let him wait. And, so, and, and when he do come, give him the word. Give him, give him, give him the word. <coughs> give him the word. Give him the word. Because the scripture says, when you submit yourself to God, when you submit yourself to God, resist the devil. And he'll flip. Just give him the word. You give him the word. Don't, don't entertain him. Don't feed them. Don't open up the door. Don't do nothing but give them the word. Give them the word. He don't like that word. He don't like that word. That, see, he don't like that word. That word going to make him run. Uh, no, he wants you to listen. He wants you to indoctrinate. He wants you to listen to his words. He wants your imagination. In your imagination, he want to talk to your imagination. He's trying to give you his imagination through you listening to his words. He's trying to plant that seed in you. But don't do it. Resist the devil and he will flee. Is that all right? God bless you.